What's up, y'all? It's winter, and today we're going to be honoring the founder of Black Art in America, Najee Dorsey. See, the story of Najee is a journey of self earned success. From chopping cotton at the age of 12, from being featured in museums across the country, not only did he get it out the mud, but he turned this mud into concrete in order to lay the foundations of Black Art in America. Najee was born. 1973 in Blytheville, Arkansas. Ever since the age of five, he had a love for creating art. He was an art school dropout, but with the encouragement of his artistic peers, he continued to strive for his creative dreams. This led him to drop everything in 2005 to become a full-time artist in Atlanta. His figurative work uses the imagery of historic black heroes set in intricate scenes with iconography rooted in southern culture, music, as well as family traditions. With his vibrant style, he uses patterns, textures, and a unique color palette to compose mixed media collage, photo montage, and even sculpture. Najee creates narratives in order to preserve the part of our history that we rarely see. And as Najee always says, a story untold is a story forgotten. In the news today, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I'm like, how can you not be affected? Are you? You know, do you see? Do you see what's going on in this world? So, what goes through your mind when you're typically painting a piece of What goes to my mind? Um, I don't. Know, I guess I'm looking for um, the balance. Um, color, temperature, atmosphere, you know, I think the uh, the feel, you know, is what I'm trying to get across uh, as I'm working, you know, this particular piece right here, um, you know, extending the picture plane onto the canvas, working the ground, and get ready to start to uh, go in and collage. I don't really overthink, I have a process. My process is my system, and so uh, I'm not necessarily thinking, having to think through what I'm trying to do. It's just going through the process of, you know, adding, you know, taking away, you know, looking for, I'm looking for the funk, man. I'm looking for um, that, that genesis quad, that thing that makes it, you know, stand out and resonate, you know. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to get across with the work. I want, you know, I want it to, um, you know, be true to, you know, the themes of my work, you know, Southern culture, family, uh, particularly when I'm working in interior spaces, it's about how we live, it's about the environment. Um, there's a certain nostalgia to it. So, but once you get past that, I want, you know, I'm trying to get across that linger effect, that, again, that funk, that uh, I call it gumbo, you know? It's like, you like rice, you like shrimp, but when you put the two together, you start to make gumbo, and I think it's bringing all those, bringing all those elements together. You know, the vintage, the found material, the photography, the paint, um, the collage. Um, that's what makes it a signature energy. Nina Simone said it best: "An artist should reflect the times." Look around you. Chances are, if you live in an urban environment, you're pretty close to a factory, maybe a refinery, perhaps a landfill. Well, this is what inspired me to create this body of work I call the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, this work speaks to how we live in plain sight of a lot of uh, these corporate uh, wastelands and refineries and things that impact our health, you know, typically in poor communities, communities of color, uh, so on and so forth. Now, a month ago, a month or so ago, I was watching a documentary uh, produced by Vice, and it was about one corporation and its partner, Bahia Pipeline and Valero, looking to, to use eminent domain to take the, the land of poor people uh, in Memphis. Now, you know, this is, the, the community uprose and they fought against it, but, you know, every day we're living in an environment where, you know, corpor corporations and corporate greed you know, build these buildings and facilities with, with very little uh, thought or concern with how it affects 
uh, the communities that surround these facilities. I thought I'd take out a billboard. You know, let me showcase my favorite piece from this body of work, ice cream melting. Little girl holding a SpongeBob popsicle in the foreground with this oil refinery in the back. Now, I grew up an hour from Memphis. You know, Memphis was where I first started to show my work in the, in the, in the late 90s, you know, a young buddy, professional artist looking to make my way, you know, and um, not sure what kind of impact that this could have, but I figured this could be a moment in time where I can use my work, you know, use my creative energy. And that's, you know, that's, I like to give visual representation to some of the challenges and the struggles that we face. Hey, we got community people living here. We got children living here and are affected by the, uh, the hazards of living in this environment. Dodgy Dorsey, creator of Black Art in America, brought several nationally known works to Butter. He says this is a great opportunity to inspire the next generation of black artists and lift up those working right now. For emerging artists and contemporary artists of the day, this is a prime opportunity. And just to have our local artists on the same bill, on the same stage as these world-renowned artists, just really elevates you know, visual art here in Indianapolis and just really pleased to bring Butter to, to the city. All right, students, now we're going to do our Najee Dorsey art project. project. Now, if you look at a Najee Dorsey, you can see that, first of all, it has perspective, it has characters, it has points of interest. Now, you can see that the characters are either drawn, painted, or collaged. So if you are thinking, I'm not very good at drawing people, you can just cut out a person out of a magazine, put it in. That's what Mr. Dorsey does. So he puts, like, I can't draw a face. All right, well, you can combine the two together. He has more than one put together. We'll have some imagery you can put on. But you do need to create an environment and a figure, at least one figure. And it should be from a childhood memory. Okay, so, you know, you're a kid. You got lots of cool memories. Think of one that really sticks out to you, something that rem you reminds you of just growing up in your neighborhood or where you live or your family and think of a place. Now we need to show perspective. That means something that goes back in space. So we can, I'm going to show you how to draw a room right here and like how you can draw just a square and making lines coming out from the corners that makes it look like a room is going back. Or you can do an outdoor scene where you have the road going back like in one of the images earlier. Or you can have um, a scene that is outside in the woods. As long as like some of the things are close up and some are far away, that is fine too. Just showing depth of field. All right, here's an example that I did. This is a childhood memory of mine. My dad built this deck. It was a two-story deck. We used to do crazy things on it. Um, I have not put my figures on it. You can see I was just drawing it out and then I'm adding collage on top. I wanted to show you the first part because that's what we're going to do today. Next week, we'll add the figures and start adding on top and start coloring it. If you do find the figures when you are cutting and looking through magazines, you may grab them out. All right, have fun and enjoy.
Wild.